Everyone is different. Each of us has a unique genetic makeup which results in the differences in our physical features and behavior. This is diversity, an important concept in ecology. In the world of microbes, diversity plays a key role in their functions and could be classified into intraspecific or interspecific diversity. Intraspecific diversity is the genotypic variation within a population, that is, members from the same species, whereas interspecific diversity occurs in a community which is made up of members from different species. Intraspecific diversity enhances the performance of a population, allowing members to perform their functions as a group. On the other hand, interspecific diversity in a community is important for its stability and function. In nature, microbes interact and exist as a community, but little is known about the interactions between intraspecific and interspecific diversity. So in this study, we investigated the interactions between intraspecific and interspecific diversity, but focused on whether these two types of diversity could functionally substitute each other. If they could, what would eventually predominate in the community? The key to this study is the spontaneous formation of morphotypic variants and the ability to use their frequency as a proxy to measure intraspecific variations within biofilms. Our data showed that both intraspecific and interspecific diversity enhance the tolerance of biofilms to surfactant stress, indicating that they are functionally substitutable. The morphotypic variants also proved to be more competitive than their parental strains in all populations and communities. Just as we expected the more competitive morphotypic variants to dominate multi-species biofilm communities, we were surprised to observe very few of them in the communities. Further investigations suggest that morphotypic variants disturb species equilibrium and lead to a less robust community that is sensitive to stress. In this project, we've uh, developed a very simple three-species uh, bacterial biofilm community. and We want to use this community so that we can study interactions between these different bacteria to do that both at the genetic level and metabolic level so that we can explain how those organisms interact with each other and how they structure those communities. Advances in sequencing techniques and microscopy uh, techniques allow us to look at genes that are expressed within the communities as well as visualize where those community members are within the biofilm. Now that we've set the basic parameters for how this model works and demonstrated the reproducibility of this system, we can use it to study how bacteria interact and how those interactions mediate community level behaviors such as increased antibiotic resistance or resistant to predation uh, pressure by protozoa. So one of these community level behaviors is resource sharing. And so for example, we see that uh, one bacterial species will not grow on a single carbon source. But when we mix the three organisms together and use that same carbon source, all three organisms grow equally well within the biofilm. So this is an example then of metabolic sharing, and in this way the community can uh, utilize metabolites more effectively where they share them across different species. Or alternatively, bacteria may produce inhibitory compounds that prevent their neighbors from growing and hence may exclude other organisms from their habitat. Another really interesting aspect of this work is that it potentially explains a paradox, which is that when we grow biofilms in a laboratory, we almost always see morphotypic variants. But when you collect bacteria from their natural environment, we almost never see variants.